Hello friends, this is Olga, mature medical student from Ukraine and in this video I want to tell you how the war touches me, uh, what happens with my um, friends and people I know and uh, yeah, what actually environment Ukrainians have. Uh, so the first uh, uh, event is uh, about my, my, one of my friends from the Kharkiv. Kharkiv is the second biggest city in Ukraine and you know it is suffers from shelling, from rockets, from I mean missiles, um, from Russian territory because actually it's very close to Russia uh, and so it cannot be protected uh, by distance at least. And uh, this my friend, actually I have their friends, not just one, uh, but uh, the other friends, they are okay. Uh, one of them told me, I actually invited her here and wanted to help her um, because she's lonely with her old mother, um, but uh, she refuses to leave uh, her uh, city. And she says that um, ah, it's okay, I'm going in the store under the bullets, there is explosions around, but thanks God my home is okay. She never attends if there are alarms uh, to go to the underground shelter. Uh, she never do that because she thinks that um, it's like, uh, you know, collective cemetery if the rocket will hit so uh, there will be no uh, chance for anyone so she never goes anywhere and uh, relies on her luck uh, but I um, want to tell you today about other people uh, and uh, also from Kharkiv another my uh, friend and uh, this woman is quite uh, adult uh, she is more than 70 years and uh, she stayed in Kharkiv and in that uh, ex exactly uh, place or district that are east, more eastern part and closer to Russian border. So this is district is under heavy shelling uh, more frequently than other parts of Kharkiv, of this city. Uh, and uh, yesterday maybe you heard about the uh, shelling and the, that missile uh, hit the big uh, nine floor building and destroyed a um, huge part of this building and uh, basically it, this, this missile made a hole in the building and there are people under the parts of this building so and the terrible uh, picture. Um, after that heavy shelling, uh, I knew that it's somewhere in the district where my friends live. So I wrote to her if she is okay, uh, and she said that this uh, rocket destroyed the the building, uh, the neighboring building, so next to her. So she lives in the building, and this destroyed building was the next so somewhere near I was actually shocked I hope her windows uh, are okay because usually in nearest uh, buildings they are also suffer at least the windows may be broken or doors or some you know small damages but seems like everything fine and why I am so worried about her exactly because this woman she takes care about major part of the cats around the problem with animals with this war arised and I think that the uh, pressure on volunteers of animal volunteers who help in abandoned animals or uh, stray animals uh, it's increased uh, mo in multiple times because a lot of people they are escaping from war they uh, abandon their cats dogs and um, they run or some people even may uh, be not alive anymore because of the Russian uh, attacks and his, their, uh, sorry, their uh, animals could be just left because the owner uh, not alive anymore or different reasons like that. 
and so this woman she has a lot of cats in her uh, on the seventh floor in her apartment there are about 20 cats but she doesn't live there because it's very dangerous so the cats are there constantly she just feed them every day and uh, clean there um, and also uh, there are cats on, in the cellar because in the, that building where she live under her flat under her, there her building is the cellar so basically she lives in that cellar it's a terrible condition because I actually did on the beginning of the war the same uh, it was very cold I remember it was March when the war just started but it was terribly cold like minus 10 minus 7 it was already spring but I don't know and uh, I was uh, also with my cats in the cellar I, I lived there so I know but uh, how, how it, it is but she has a lot of cats and also some cats they are living uh, in the cellar near her and also there are cats that were abandoning and leave it in the district so in some cellars maybe in other uh, buildings around and she feeds all of them she now she takes care about 80 about 80 cats also as i understood uh, the volunteers they are bringing some cats from the front line where is military action happens uh, so they call them like transit animals so they just i don't know weak or when uh, they can be taken from uh, the uh, front line to shore and then for a while to some other places deeper in Ukraine inside. So I decided to help her uh, at least by food, uh, at least by something, uh, you know, uh, small, but I think for her it's really important, you know, maybe some um, against uh, this uh, veterinary remedies against fleas because it's usually a problem with especially in such uh, cases um, so I wanted to help her and uh, I know that uh, for example in Kiev when it was danger of surroundment and the beginning of the war um, the big buildings full of flats full of apartments and uh, in each there are, was uh, some family of people who were living uh, but uh, when this uh, the situation become frightening and dangerous most of them are left but only few people like two or three person for uh, one uh, part of the building left usually it is uh, elder woman uh, who wasn't taken by their uh, young like uh, daughters or sons or something um, so I think this woman she is like that uh, but I want to help her to continue help her and not only just to her but other um, such people uh, it is the first part of my story uh, how the Ukrainians even abroad can be involved and in, uh, in this conflict uh, not just because I have my property uh, in Ukraine and also I'm worrying every time I I'm, I heard that the drones or missiles were somewhere close to my uh, property um, there it is of course happens uh, but also like this another part another story I want to tell you today it is the story about my group mate um, this is the uh, boy the the man the young man uh, my group mate and uh, he was uh, stopped by the representatives of uh, ukrainian army not that far ago i think on the previous week and uh, they asked them to go and pass the uh, how to say military medical uh, examination so there are such a things to understand if the person is available to be a soldier or can uh, occupy some other uh, position in army because the soldiers on the field it is not essential part of the army but there are also uh, some other representatives that are working uh, not on the front line but uh, behind so anyway, uh, he was stopped and he received the, um, the uh, document that he is 
has to come to pass this examination uh, and all become worried about him um, because uh, there was uh, cases when uh, for example here uh, in Italy one my friend she told me that uh, one woman she has the student so it is about 20 or 18 years old uh, son and he also was stopped by the representatives of army by soldiers and uh, I don't know in their uh, institutions somewhere um, so he become very fast a soldier maybe for some months like few months of training and he become a soldier and he he was a soldier and take the part in the military action about one half of the year and the, the problem was that he was just on the street just walked somewhere and uh, he doesn't have her, his uh, uh, plastic card that he is a student mm, and that's why uh, he told him I'm sure that he is a student he is that he is, has documents at home but no one cared about it and uh, so the he yeah he was in become a soldier um, and uh, their family his family uh, started the um, how to say justice process so they um, came to a lawyer and also they uh, came to a court so it was all a long story that's why he was uh, half of the year on the front line uh, but finally the court um, uh, make a decision that it's not uh, correct that it's against law so he is a student and he has to attend the the university in person so it's not correct that military representatives took him and so we have such a cases I'm sure that it's not like everywhere happens and very frequent but it happens and uh, obviously that uh, this system have has to be regulated somehow uh, because sometimes it, the, the military representatives, they act in a bit like chaotic, um, maybe because they are in rush uh, and uh, yeah, it's third year of the war, but uh, the, as I understood, the military system is very conservative, so uh, it's very hard for them to create a new rules and uh, to regulate it on the all levels and everywhere in all regions. So sometimes this unpleasant uh, situation happens um, and uh, so that's why our group was very, um, how to say, disturbed that the, one of the group mates were, was stopped by the representatives of Ukrainian army. But luckily he has the plastic card his, that he is a student. Uh, but anyway, of course, he is in the list now, and um, uh, so um, his name will be in the their base uh, online now. Um, and uh, basically, this uh, year, the our country started to make the big audit to make a big check of all people who can be in army and who cannot be in army it's very uh, complicated question because uh, our army needs the soldiers and often our you know, military high representatives say are saying that uh, the young soldier is better than the middle aged soldier because simply the young person may run longer like 10 kilometers with a 10 20 uh, kilograms uh, on on the uh, body and uh, for young person it's easier than for adult from uh, another point of view adults are saying that uh, um, these boys are just 20 years old though their life is just beginning and uh, they have have to live uh, their lives achieve something and uh, better when the people middle age they taking the guns and they are protecting their uh, country um, 
because they already achieved something they already have kids and uh, they protecting their family basically so it's very complicated question and i think i have no right to judge uh, what is wrong what is right because it uh, de demands like analysis for people who are more involved uh, you know in in this process and who are professionals but anyway my goal here just to uh, tell you this and i'm still despite all these difficulties believe in the um, consolidation of ukrainian society and the uh, change um, that will have hap happened have to happen in all branches of our country like for example even military system or other they should uh, anyway uh, lead us to victory so this is my video thank you for watching um, uh, i uh, will be happy that if you're supporting still ukraine um, i'm very uh, surprised that a lot of people are in the world they are really so nice so compassionate and um, they uh, really care about the problems of our country care about democracy and care about the uh, yeah the justice you know <laughs> in the world thank you for watching it was uh, your dr olga <laughs> bye bye